Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, so today I'm going to do, uh, not quite an unboxing, uh, because I've already opened up all the packs, but I'm going to show off some of the new cards from the new Magic the Gathering sect, uh, Caligam. Uh, so I have bought, this is a, one of the bundle packs, uh, comes with 10 draft boosters, and I've bought, uh, I got two of these, because I, I bought one, so I was like, oh, I like Magic cards, I always buy, like, the new sets, um, and I was like, ooh, I really like this set and this theming. Um, so I bought a second one. And some packs. Um, and I'll probably go buy some more before this is over at some point. Because, um, assuming you're watching this, you're at least somewhat from a Magic Gathering. It's a trading card game. You buy cards, you build your decks. Um, you can buy pre-constructed pre decks. If you don't want to build your own, you can buy booster packs. Um... The big heavy thing they're really focusing on in the last uh, year or so are uh, commander sets, which are uh, decks of cards that have 100 cards in the deck, versus typically you make a deck that has 60 cards. A commander deck has 100 cards, but the unique thing about commander, also known as Elder Head Dragon for older Magic players, is there is uh, one, the, out of the 100 cards, Except for your land cards, which are your mana cards you can pay for your cards. All the other cards have to be different. You can only have one of each card. Um, so it invokes you having to, like, come up with a better strategy to do something. So if you have a card that, you know, oh, I have this card that, you know, like this 1-1 one, one creature, this tiny creature that does something neat. Well, I can't play four of them. I have to choose different versions. Or I have a card that, like, oh, this, like, there's a one card that's called Murder. Uh, it's like a uh, three cost, four cost. I don't remember. I think it's four cost. Uh, but it just straight up destroys any creature. Uh, so it's pretty powerful. Like, in some decks might run, like, two or three of them. This you can't. There's a red card. Uh, there's lots of red cards that are, like, one cost that do two damage. There are various burn spells. Uh, I mean, and there's a lot of different ones. But, so you can't have just the one. Like, you can't, I think Spark is one that does two damage. You can't play four copies of Spark anymore. You have to find different cards that maybe do stuff a little bit differently. Maybe have a, maybe you have to play something of the higher cost. Uh, I have always liked the concept of it. Because being someone that doesn't, doesn't generally go out and buy a ton of cards, I have a lot of like, ooh, I've bought ten packs. So I have... You know, one copy of this, two copies of this, maybe three copies of this card. Versus you look at a lot of people that play full-on decks and they have, uh, you know, four copies of this, four copies of that, four copies of this, three copies of that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't buy enough Magic cards. I don't go out and play tournaments enough to sit there and specifically buy cards. So that kind of format was nice for me. Uh, the other kind are the drafting. Um, and that's another big thing they're really pushing. Uh, unfortunately pandemic year makes drafting in real life a little bit more difficult but they do have magic online you can play in magic arena um so you can do those there if you can't get together people but the idea of drafting is you buy three packs of cards um and you sit down with, i think it's eight people is the minimum number you're supposed to have um to do a draft i could be wrong on that number uh, but basically you, know, you open up a pack, you pull out one card that you want, then you pass every pack to the left. And then everyone does this until you've went through an entire pack of cards. Then you open up the second pack, take out one card you want, and you pass it to the right. And then you get, you get the next person's pack, you take one card out of that pack, you pass it. And the idea is you're building your deck with a limited resource pool. So instead of it being... So it kind of evens the playing field out from, again, people that can go out and... I can spend $200 on launch day and buy two full booster boxes of cards, build whatever deck I want because I have four of every single common, you know, at least three of every single uncommon, two of almost every rare, and I have, like, like almost every single mythic rare because I have money to dump into this. The drafting makes it, uh, kind of puts everyone in a little bit more of an even playing field for that, that fact, because everyone has access to the same pack of cards. So lots of people, when they open up the first, the first pack, they're probably taking out usually the rare or mythic rare card, and then lots of times people then go for the uncommons, 
but you also it also makes you tweak how you do your decks, uh, which I find really interesting. Um, because you might start off being like, I'm gonna play a blue deck. I love blue decks. Uh, but then you have to like you get like another you get like four packs in and like there's no more blue cards because other people had the same thought. Crap! Now you have to stop and think. Okay, I guess I'll mix in black. And you might grab a black card. And you get the next three packs of cards. And there's no blacks. You had to choose a different card. So you have to keep tweaking your strategies. Um, which makes it really fun. Um, I, I actually I like doing drafts. They're, they're really cool to play. It's just. They're not. They're not always the cheapest. Because you have to buy three packs right there. Um, and then also is the other thing is. You kind of have to. You, you got two mindsets of playing as you can grab cards to try and build a deck to win with or you can might be like all right i really like this specific card i'm gonna grab it even though it won't help me and i have to watch times when people will pull like a mythic or a rare card that's like oh i got a planeswalker it's red i don't plan on playing red i don't want to use this card but they're gonna grab it anyhow you know, so it kind of gets like that. Um, you kind of feel like wasting, like, wasting a turn grabbing, like, a rare card because maybe it's worth money or it's something you want as part of your collection or you might want for your own home personal deck, but it doesn't work for that, and then you're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage. Anywho, so I only bring up the fact about these two sets because that's, that's how they do it. So if you buy these big boxes, you're going to get draft packs, um... And I just want to explain that because there's a different, there's a couple different types of packs they do now, um, which I really love. I, mean, I didn't actually realize they're doing. It. I haven't been as into Magic the Gathering the last few years because I haven't had people to play with as often. Um, this is awesome. This is the uh, Calgarum art. This is the new Planeswalker symbol, which they use for all the Planeswalkers with five Pierce, and then they just, like adapt it towards that. Because uh, there's like the regular symbol there. A little flyer that came with it. Shows some of the uh, different characters. Um, from the new set. Um, and what this set is. Sorry I've been talking rambling about this. What I like about this set. This is based off of Vikings. In Viking lore. Um, so you're going to get cards in here. So it, it adds a couple of really neat things that I like. And I'll go over them a little bit. Let me explain these packs quick. So. We have a typical pack of cards. This is a 15 uh, card draft pack. So this is what your old, your if you played Magic any time like in the last I don't know, 10 years, this is what you'd normally buy. You go up and buy a pack of cards with your 15 cards. There's one guaranteed rare, three uncommons, and the rest are common cards. Um, and that rare card could be a mythic rare. Uh, and then you usually have a foil card at the end, um, which could be any rarity. And that's typically how your packs are. And there's usually like a token or like promotional other card in there as well. Um, so what they added now, and I don't know if they added it for this set or if this is something that came in one of the last sets and I just didn't notice it because it's like I really, I think the last time I really bought Magic was uh, Dominic, no I bought, bought Dominaria because I did a box set in that and then I did, um, I can't think of it, name of the set right now but it was based on Fairy Tales. And I really love the theming of that. And I love this one because it's Vikings. Um, and like Norse type stuff. So this is the new 12 card pack. So there's less cards in here. Um, but what is neat about this. And I don't know if it breaks down the rarity on here. Um, it has stuff for other things it breaks down. But what was neat about these is because this is a random pack, so out of every single card in the set, you could get any any different colors, this and that. These new packs, which are a little bit cheaper, a couple fewer fewer cards, um, is are essentially like themed packs. So like I just bought, so I I have this one right here, and just to kind of kind of quickly show it off, um, and I'm gonna, I'll go over this a little bit later. So, this one was based around snow cards. So, we have a snow artifact. Um, we have a snow sorcery, a snow creature, snow artifact, snow legendary creature, snow creature. Uh, and then, it keeps it to colors. So, this one has, it has a couple different colors, but it's 
you have your blacks and blues, blacks, blues, there's a couple of greens, it's blacks, blues, and greens. There's just a zombie, because a couple of those cards are zombies. Um, you know, zombie, so it's, it's, it's a mixture of, uh, snow cards, zombie cards, so it's like a little mini themed pack. So I bought this one pack, I have 12 cards based around snow and zombie. Um, I bought a second one that was based around, um, angels and, uh, on this sector, Valkyrie. So, like, the Valkyrie card says angel with a subtype, like, cleric or warrior or whatever. Um, and that's really cool, because it's like, I can buy a pack of cards and, like, okay, here's an idea of what I can go off of what I want to do. Versus, you buy one of the other ones, you know, you might get, out of the 15, you could get one red, one white, and all the rest could be the other three colors. And you're like, well, great, I can't... You know, and they might all be so far and few, like... It might not have anything to do with each other, really. Uh, the other thing that you get in here is you also get a foil card. And the foil card has... Uh, might not have anything to do with the rest of the set. Might not really fit the theming. Um, you get this full artwork card, which this, I believe, is brand new. Um, so I got two of these now. There's 81 of those, so these, you know, could take a while to collect. And then the third thing they have in here, which was interesting, um, is there's always a chance, this is something new, I think they may have started in the last set, I'm not sure. But this is, uh, old cards, so this is a different set. This is from Ice Age. Um, not Ice Age, Cold Snap. Um, which is... It links to the set because it has to do with ice, and I don't know if that just happens to be a coincidence. But what they started to do was they started putting these paths and started adding, like, there's a chance, it's not a guarantee, but you could get an old card from an older set. So it was a neat way for them to re-release older cards, that may, and I'm guessing maybe it's just, it probably has to be themed. They probably, like, this is a set about, you know, uh, the Norse stuff, like Snow Creature. So they probably released so many cards into the set that had to deal or link with these or similar type. But it's a neat way to get, like, them old cards. And it's not just, like, a reprint. Um, like, where they, they like, reprinting it, took up a spot in that set. Uh, so that's kind of neat. The other type of pack that I don't have, um, is they have their, they're, like, thick boxes or little thick boxes, like, this big. Um, they're based on coloring. I believe there's 35 cards in each one, but there's one for each color. Red, blue, uh, black, green, and white. Um, and if you buy one of them, you get 35 cards based on that color. And there's going to be duplicates, but that can kind of be like, hey, I really like playing red decks, or I really like playing green decks. Um, you could buy one of those, and then, again, rather than, like, one of the draft packs where you can get any number of any color cards. Um, or even this one, even though they're all themed. Um, I, you saw I got three different colors worth of cards. And then my secret extra card was a white, so that's a fourth color. Um, you buy those cards, you're going to get a set of cards that are all kind of together. So essentially, the idea is there's, you can buy that. There's 35 cards. You buy some land. You get some land cards you have from another set or whatever. You can slap it in there. And you can essentially play that as a deck. Um, and then it kind of... And then they did have a sixth box for that set. For this set. Which is the Viking set. So it's all themed on just the Viking ones. So that's probably all five colors. Um, but it's kind of specifically Viking cards. And if I end up buying one of them. I'll probably do a video for that too. Um, but I just wanted to show off what I had in, in these sets. This is such a neat theming. Um, so like I said, they, this is based on, like, Norse mythology. Um, and so it's gonna have stuff that's gonna be, like, like the Norse-type characters. Uh, like the beards, the axes, uh, things like that. But it still has the magic flair to it. Um, the other couple of themings it has in here is, like, I showed you Snow, which is a new mechanic, which is an old mechanic that got brought back for a while, and then I loved it when it got brought back, and I'm awesome, I, I love, I didn't even know it was in this set when I bought it, I'm like, well, this is Vikings, I love Vikings, I love Norse things, this will be awesome, and I bought this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's snow cards in there, I was super excited, um, um, now I'll, I'll explain what snow cards do when I get to them. 
They also have, they brought back theming of God cards, uh, which are not God cards like Yu-Gi-Oh! They're not giant, massive creatures that, you know, break the game. Um, kind of, because they are bigger creatures that have super effects, but um, they're, they're a type of legendary creature. And this is based off, like, the Norse gods. So you're going to have cards that represent, like, your character, like, characters, or, uh, characters, I said, gods, characters, however you want to list it, uh, you know, kind of, like, like, Thor, Loki, Odin, um, Hela, you know, like, and I mean, you know, these are, you know, you're probably known from, like, Marvel Comics, um, but they're based off the Norse mythology, you're gonna get characters that are based off of those characters, but they're not called that, so I'm not gonna draw a card called Thor, I'm not gonna draw a card called Loki, I'm gonna get other ones that are, get the similar feel, um, and then you're at some of the other archetypes we'll kind of go through. So if you buy one of these big boxes, um, so you're going to get your 10, 10 packs of cards. You're going to get your big box. You get a, you get a cool storage box. Um, and it's angled like that to help pull it off. And they also come with an extra little tray in there that goes into the box. So you can kind of sort out like this deck, that deck, something like that. So that's kind of neat. You're going to get a oversized spin down life counter so this is essentially a d20 um but all of these boxes have always had have come with these so this is your life total you have 20 life in the game um and it spins down so the symbol for the set is always on the top and it spins down 19 18 17 16 15 14 all the way down to one so could you use this as an actual d20 in like a game you're playing you could but your numbers might not be as... Because they're all in order like that, it might not be as random as the other one. This is actually a pretty lightweight dice. It's bigger than most other dice you get, but it's also lighter weight. Um, but it looks really cool. Um, then the other two things they always do is they always give you a bunch of land cards. So we get 20 premium foil and 20 basic land, and we get an alternate art for one of the cards. So... I get two different packs. One's going to have my regular land. One's going to have my foil cards. I'm not going to open these because I have the other ones opened. So we're going to get all our foil land cards. So you got your plains, your islands, your swamps, your mountains, your forests. You get a bunch of foils and you get a bunch of regular versions. So we're going to show off some of the different areas of this world. Like magic land cards tend to do. And we got some like hip cards. And then we got an alternate art version. So this, there's probably a regular one in this set. It's a rare, but this is an alternate version of it. Um, this is the re reflections of the Lich Jara. Um, and in this set, the Lich Jara are a, a race of like shape changers or changelings. Um, so they're kind of neat. Alright, so, now that I've rambled and rambled and rambled, let's actually just go through the cards. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on every card. Otherwise, this is going to be a four-hour video because I have a bunch of them. As you can see, there's a bunch of cards here. But I like to just kind of go through and point some of these out. Like, they're, they're neat. So, we're going to get... Let's see if we can focus here, camera... Come on, there we go. Alright, so we have a rag, which have a bunch of giants. Um, this is actually kind of funny, because he has a new keyword type, coward. I've never seen that one before. Not to say it hasn't existed before, um, but we got giants. So there's giant races, um, which are in this sector in the rag color, because rag is typically a giant color. And if you, you know, start to see where that goes. Uh, so we have, like, the Mists of the Lit Jaria, so this is, like, the other one. Uh, this is an enchantment, it lets you do some, you know, uh, hurt some creatures. Of course, we got some demons in the black. Broken Wings, uh, there's typically, a, usually a card for lots of these sets where you get, uh, green cards that like to take out flying creatures. 
Um, and lots of the flavor text I always love on these cards too. Uh, we have an Infernal Pet. Um, so you gain some extra effects for doing stuff. Here we have one of our Snowlands. And then what's awesome about all these magic sets I've been doing lately is they're, they're, they're more willing to like change. Once they change all the set work, they'll change the borders and stuff a lot more. They're getting a lot more artistic. Um, so this has like kind of like a snowy pattern on there. Uh, just to show off that it's, um, a snow card. So, like, compared to this white card. So, we have, these are, are both, a, I don't know, technically this land probably isn't actually white. But you can kind of see it's, it's artistic -y. Um, I'll, I'll find a better example. Um, so what Snowman, Snowland does is, let's see if I can find a snow creature. Of course, now that I'm looking for one, I can't find one. I have one right here on the front of this. All right, great. Where is it? All right. So here's a snow creature. Here's a snow black creature. A uh, Grim Draugr. Uh, so, they, like, the black ones in here, they're zombies, but they're kind of like the undead, uh, like, Norse characters. So, they're really cool. They're not just, they're not like your typical, like, mindless zombies, essentially. Uh, they're like the falling ones that are living in, like, kind of like hell, sort of. Um, but what's different on here is, if I can find, so, like, here's one of my regular black cards. Just has, like, the mainly black border. You can see how it has like a whitish, like more white powdery border in there. So it just helps it kind of stand out as being a snow card just by looking at it. Um, and then it also has like in the text box down here, it has a kind of like a frost effect. So I love it, just little things like that. Um, but then they also have this extra little mana symbol, which is like a little snowflake. So to cast something with that, to be able to play that snow mana... Um, is you have to place something with a snow source. So, like, this is a snow land, which says that you can tap it to add one mana of the chosen color you pick. So, let's say if I pick black, for example, I could pick this card, play it, pick one black mana. When I tap it to gain that mana, it's going to produce one black snow mana. So, then what it does is I could use that one mana to either pay for... The black to pay for one of the two, or I could use to pay for the snow mana. Um, and that's just kind of what it is. So it's basically you have to have snow land or or a creature that produces mana that's snow, um, that's a snow creature. Like you have like an elf or something, or you know, there's various ways. Um, yes, yeah, so you do that, and then they produce a special snow mana. So it makes these creatures a little bit harder to use their abilities or play some of these cards because you have to have that specific land but you can essentially build your entire deck with snow land and every single one of your land cards can be snow i believe unless they change the rule in snow land you can only have four of each in your deck um but even still then you just like if you're playing black like a black and red deck include four black and four red snow mana chances are you're going to get one that will produce it because even if you don't have any other snow creatures, it'll still produce snow mana. Um, before, like, some of these other sets came out, I used to always run snow mana in my deck, to, like, snow land, just because I thought it was hilarious to do. Like, so like, oh, you got snow land? I'm like, yeah, but I don't have any snow creatures because the old one sucked. Um, anywho, so that's that. All right, let's, let's jump back into some of these. Uh, so we have Dusk, we have some Elves. These are Dark Elves, as you you know, it being a black card, it's a dark dark elf color. Uh, they have a brand new keyword in here called Boast. Uh, so Boast is, it's an activated ability only if the creature attacked and only once per turn. So when a creature attacks, um, for, the first, for at least the first time during the turn, or one time, if they can attack multiple times, you're supposed to be good on the second time, um, you can you, trigger their effect, which it could be like this, since it's pay one. Target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And the idea is supposed to be, uh, 
typically like Norse Norse characters, like the Vikings or like the Dark Elves or whatever, or the Giants. They're they're kind of like a braggy bunch of people. They're like, ha, I stomped on you, or I raided your village, or I'm a I beat down your clan, you know. Um, I mean, look at, if you watch the Thor movies, look at how Thor acts against the Frost Giants, or pretty much anybody. Um, you get the idea, they're, you know, it's a, it's a very thematic ability. They attack, and they're like, ha, I'm attacking you. And it doesn't say if they won the battle. It just says when they attack. Um, so that's actually cool. Uh, we have dwarves, of course. Dwarven Reinforcements, and they're red. This is a second ability, the new ability we have, called Foretell, and it's showing off by this, uh, like, this raven in the back, which is neat. That way you can quickly look and see if it's a Foretell card. And they did that because it says, you can pay this for two, and it says, during your turn, you may pay two blank, two regular mana to exile this card from your hand, and you can cast it later for its Foretell cost. So, essentially, what this does is, I can take this card, I can pay two generic mana, I can sit it down outside my playfield, and then at some point in a later turn, I can, f I can, you know, basically pick it back up to look at, so you can look at your own cards. And for two mana, I can play it, and, but my opponent doesn't know what it is. So that's what makes it interesting. Um, because you could play like three, four of these out there, and they'd be like, well, I don't know what card he has sitting out there. And it's also because it lets you break down your turn. So normally if I played this card, I'd have to wait to like four man out. But now what I could do is I could play it on one turn for two. Then the next turn play it for another two. Um, or you could have cards that like gain uh, effects for the more cards you play each turn. Um, or it might have like trigger abilities. Like if you play this card... Like, every time you play a creature card or creature come to play, you get this. So you might want to save it to trigger it later, too. Um, plus, since it's cheaper, um, the second time you play, it only costs two, then you can maybe play that and play another card in the same turn. So it's a really neat idea. Um, it's kind of harkens back to uh, sort of like the morph cards where you played two and you played them face down. Your opponent didn't know what you had, but it's still a creature. And they had... Um, Crap, what was the other one that was like that? Um, oh, I can't remember. I love it. It's not Echo. Um, oh, it was in Time Spiral. I can't remember. There's another card. You know, I, my brain's not clicking on what the effect, what the name of it was. Um, Suspend. You play a card for a suspend cost. Of like, if you paid it and it was like, maybe you paid like one mana and it was like an eight cost card. Or something, but then you had to have it sit out for X number of turns, and then when it came, then after that last counter went away, it came in. Um, so it kind of goes off to that. You're playing something, you're delaying, you're paying for it cheaper now to get it late. All right, um, let's get back to that. All right, so we have Race the Draugr. Uh, getting some cards from the grave, and you can see, like, different sizes. Interesting. Uh, Poison the Cup. This is a foretell. Uh, yeah, so this is, like, an interesting one. Destroy target creature. If this spell is for cold, scry two. So normally, it's a three-cost card just to destroy a creature. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, but you could pay, essentially, you're paying four for it by exile, and then a later turn, you could destroy it for two. So you're getting it on a later turn for one cheaper than the normal, so again, it would maybe let you destroy a creature and do something else. Uh, but then you also get a scry too, which lets you look at the top two cards of your deck um, and put them back in any order. Um, or put them on the bottom of your deck, yeah, I believe. I think you just get a look at them. I think you might have the option of putting them on the bottom of your deck. If, uh, but yeah, that definitely gives you some options there. Um, this is a cool card. These are vehicles. They introduced these a while ago. Uh, so they're an artifact, but you have to have a crew. Um, and the number means tap any number of creatures you control with the total power of that many or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature till the end of turn. 
So basically you do is you put it down as an artifact, it just sits there. Um, and it essentially can't attack or defend or do anything else. Um, and then if you spend enough points to have enough, like, a big enough creature or enough creatures, essentially, uh, to run it, to pilot it, um, then they activate it and it can be used. So, like, this is a six. It's saying, like, I could have six, you know, one-one humans, you know, pushing this, or pulling this plow around. Or, I could have a six-six giant do it by himself. Um, it's kind of the thing the thematic reasoning behind that. Um, but it's a really neat effect too. When Colossal Plow attacks, add three white mana, and you gain three life. So you're like, you're plowing the fields. You're getting the white mana, which like, grain, or whatever, and you're gaining life. Um, and then until the end of your turn, you don't lose this mana as the steps and phases end. Uh, so basically, I get it, I can keep this mana all the way till the end of my turn, and I can use it at any point for anything else. Um, because normally, how the, how the mana works is like, you have your main phase, and you tap, you tap four cards for mana, so I have four mana, as soon as you're done with your main phase, that mana disappears. So you can't then use that mana in your, um, attack phase, or your second main phase. Um, and they, I, I guess I didn't realize until I really read this card that that's how that worked. Because I just always use my mana, like, I need to pay something for four mana, I pay for four mana. But I guess it makes sense, you can't have a card that produces something like this, produces three mana. Um, like, if you cast something that produces two mana, you can't just use one and save the one for a later, later on. Um, little card there. Alright, so we got some human soldiers, like your, your Vikings. Um, and they have like the different realms, like Star and Helm. Uh, so when Shieldmate Berserk, when Beskirk Shieldmate dies, create a 1-1 one, one human warrior creature token. So basically if he goes down, someone else is going to step up and take his spot. Uh, we have some zombie wizards. Um, this is actually a neat, I, I like some of these effects. Uh, Add one water mana, but spend it only to foretell a card from your hand or to cast an instant or sorcery. So it lets you get mana, but for a specific reason. Oh, uh, we got spiders, because I have some, you know, some more, some of the generic kind of, I don't want to say generic, like spiders are like weird common thing, but they're a common thing in there. Uh, we have Elf Berserker. Uh, in this one, he dies. Uh, if its power is three or greater, Create a 2 2 zombie berserker token. So it's Sven fell, fell the elf with an arrow through the chest, but moments later the corpse rose with a sneer to fight again. Uh, so it's kind of like a neat dark magic thing. Like if you can power them up a little bit, you know, and then they die, they're going to come back. Um, smashing success, we need to destroy some things, create some treasure tokens. Uh, we have the Mistwalker, the Shapeshifter. So, Changeling is a unique thing. So, this card is every creature type. So, your creature type is Shapeshifter. Um, but it's like where this one was Imp, and that one was, uh, Elf Berserker. Uh, this is Zombie Wizard. This is included as every single type available. So, if you have something that boosts up an Elf or boosts up a Giant, this card also gains a bonus. Um, so this is the... Uh, with Jara, so it lets you, um, kind of lets them, like, they get, like, mixed with all the other different races. Uh, we have the Stalwart Valkyrie, so the Valkyrie are the angels, and there's various classes, there's, like, the warriors, gonna be the clerics, depending on, kind of, like, what their proposition is. Um, so it's kind of, so they do this in Magic a lot, where they'll have what would be a classic type of character, which is neat, like, Valkyrie, like, Okay, that's a very Norse thing, um, the Valkyrie. Um, but they didn't just, they didn't, they could have just made creature type Valkyrie. But the problem is, is then, now how do you fit, like, a Valkyrie type into other sets? They don't like to create a brand new creature type that's only gonna fit into one set. So it's easier to say, oh, Valkyries are angels with various classes. Um, Elf Berserker, we have a Dusk Wielder, we've already seen him. 
Um, so here's a neat one. The Bloodline Pretender. This is an artifact creature. Uh, it's also a shapeshifter. Uh, Fearless Liberator, a Dwarf Berserker. So here's one of the treasures. This is a treasure token. So it's a token that represents if you have a card that makes a treasure, you can play this down rather than to try and remember it. Um, so you, you tap it to sacrifice it to add one color of anything. So basically, you're spending your treasure. Um, I just love the way magic keywords and things, they make sense. Like I said, boasting makes sense for what it is. Treasure makes sense. Crewing something, you get what it means. Um, this is for special dual cards. So I'll show you one of those when we get there. Um, yeah, I, I just like how... You're like, what does flying do? Flying lets you go over things. Okay, that makes sense. What does haste do? Haste lets you be faster. You get to attack right away. Gotcha. Uh, like, almost all of their keywords or, like, concepts make sense. Um, and again, like, foretold. That, that's an ability that lets you, you know, you're paying a thing to, like, hum. I'm thinking about what might happen in the future. And then later, you're making that happen by paying for it. You're foretelling the future. But, like, you could be like, well, yeah, what if I never pay for it? And it just sits out there forever. You looked into the future. You didn't like that future. You did something different. You know, that kind of idea. Uh, here we have Frost Dogger, a snow creature. Uh, so if you pay one snow mana, look at the top card of your library. If it's a snow card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. So, again, one cost for a 1-2. Not terrible. But if you can play snow mana, all of a sudden this guy can become pretty, pretty badass. Um, so you're like, and it comes in different colors. So you have like a Boreal Outlier. So this is another elf warrior, but these are green elves. So this is more of like your uh, high elves um, versus the black ones, which are like the, uh, like the dark elf race. Um, and if my wife was here, I could probably say... Okay, which uh, of the Norse realms do the Dark Elves belong with? Which one do the... She could probably sit here and tell me. Um, I, I like all that stuff, but I don't have any of that stuff memorized. I mean, like, I know, like, from Marvel Comics and stuff, and I like, you know, Asgard, and... Um, I know there's, like, Nebelheim and uh, Jotunheim, which is the Frost Giants and stuff, and I... But this also has their own... Magic has their own set. So it's like... And they don't 100% correspond with each other. Um, but yeah, like, so it's neat. There, there's the links, but I don't know them all. Um, ooh, I love this one. This is neat. Feed the Serpent. Exile target creature or planeswalker. So it not only, uh, destroys them, gets them off the field, but it literally exiles them. Um, and this is neat because, uh, it mentions down here, uh, the final moments of his existence tumbling down the length of a serpent's jaw, driven mad by the magnitudes of the cosmos. Uh, cosmos is a giant snake. So, again, if you're familiar with some of the Norse mythology, um, there's the, like, Midgard serpent. Um, oh, whose name, like, everything just slipped in my mind today. Um, but it's a giant world, Jorgamond, I believe it is. Jorgamond, I could be saying that wrong, but then again... I know lots of my stuff from Marvel Comics, not direct Norse mythology, so me pronouncing it wrong is very possible. Um, but yeah, it's this giant, like, snake. Um, and I actually have one of those cards, so I'll reference that when we get there. Uh, Sculptor of Winter, so this is an elf rogue. So here you can tap, untap target snow land. So basically you can play this card. Lots of elves have the ability to, like, tap to produce mana. So this one lets you tap to... Uh, get ready to use a snow mana a second time. So it essentially lets you have a, a free point of mana, um, but it also lets you use it as any color, which is really neat. Here we have a giant ox. So we had that plow before, which you needed six power. Look, we have an ox for six power. Um, so giant ox cruiser vehicle using its toughness rather than its power. So its toughness is the first one. But this one just uses its base power. So this one you can basically play this ox by itself to run that giant plow. Um, and it has a special ability that specifically lets it do that. Uh, so that's neat, neat little synergy in there. Uh, we have a dead rider. So this is a spirit knight. 
uh, snakeskin veil. Uh, well, when counter on target creature you control, it gains hexproof. Hexproof means it can't be the target of abilities your opponent controls. Uh, we have a Skull Raider. It says, uh, like, eating, eating into that guy's head. Disdainful Stroke. That's a counter some spells. Uh, we have Master Skulls. We have a dwarf, and this is a white dwarf. So there's going to be some from different, uh, different colors. They mix and match. Uh, we have some trolls, which are on the reg. Uh, the Hoggy Mob. And again, Hoggy's probably like the name of this troll race in there, but they didn't want to call it creature type Hoggy because they're never going to probably use that outside of the set because that's specifically this is race. Um, and they did that like other sets they had uh, goblins, which are your common, like cheap red creatures. There was one of the other worlds they did where they. Um, wanting to use Goblin, I know it's like Kami Gawa did this, I believe, which is the Japanese based set, which is one of my other favorite sets. Um, if I can ever get a box of that, believe me, I'll op do an unboxing on here with that. Um, any of the three expansions for that. Um, but yeah, they didn't, they had the little red 1 1 red goblins, but they weren't called goblins in that set. Um, that's just another one they do. Alright, any, let's move on. Run Amok, getting some Frostfire Arcanist. Uh, so this is a Giant Wizard, which I just love some of these types like that. Costs one less to cast if you control a Giant or a Wizard. Uh, when he enters a battlefield, trick your library for an instant or sorcery card with the same name as a card in your graveyard. Put it into your hand and then shuffle your library. So he gets to... Um, so this is a neat thing they did. They've been doing this a lot more in some of the recent sets where they have alternate, uh, artwork cards in the set. Years are, like, I've been playing Magic, you know, forever. Um, so, uh, they usually, if they ever had alternate artwork stuff, it was always something that was either, like, like, uh, this card was an alternate artwork part of a box. Or it was a Friday Night Magic you know, tournament promo card, which just had alternate artwork. But, like, all the rest of the card looked the same. It just had a different picture there. Lately, they've been doing stuff where they have, they've been playing around having different borders and things that, you know, are more thematic. They said they did this in the fairy tale set. They're doing this in this set. Um, they did it with, uh, I got they did it with the Egyptian set they did recently, the Amok set. And they even had somewhere they had like literally you buy like you get like an actual like pack where they're like they're I think they were written like in like a kind of like an Egyptian type font and stuff too. Uh, so they're even more extreme. But yeah, this is really neat. So it has like a just neat little like border. So it's a blue card. It's a black card. Uh, it's kind of got like the you know stuff. So it looks like Norsey. Um, like, you could buy, like, a full set of, like, all the cards like this. That would be really cool. Um, but yeah, that's it. And plus, it's a legendary snow creature. Snow creatures, zombies get plus one. If you can pay three snow mana, you can return him from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, and this is a legendary creature. Um, legendary creatures, if you're not familiar, are essentially, like, your main characters in a story. So, if, let's say we were talking, like, Lord of the Rings, you'd be like... Hey, here's all these hobbits. Hobbits are, you know, this color, that color. There's all the different. There's the farmer hobbit. There's the cook hobbit. And then you have your legendary creatures. You have Sam. You have Frodo. They're the named characters. Um, and that's, you know, sort of how magic works. Um, is you have your your legendary characters are a little, generally more expensive to play. This guy costs five mana. Uh, but not always. There's some that are really cheap. It just depends on what they do. Is more of what it is versus them being a legendary. They don't make like a 1-1 one, one creature that does something just because he's a character in the story. You don't make him really expensive just because he's legendary. Oh, it's still based on what he does and all that stuff. Um, but legendary creatures versus other creatures in here is the other creatures you can have up to four in your deck. 
um, and you can play them. If you can somehow make copies of them, you can have more and more copies, or you can have, like, tokens of cards, like, you can have, like, 1-1 one, one human tokens. You could have 500 of them if you could make 500 1-1 one, one human tokens. It doesn't matter. Legendary creatures, there can only be one. Um, so I cannot play, if I play another, uh, Nerful the Betrayed King, if I'm correct in the new ruling, because they keep changing this, I can play him, but I have to discard one version of him. Um, and my opponent can also play a version. If I remember, that's how it is now. Because they it used to be that um, only one player could have a legendary creature. So that means if I had this and play and my opponent played one, it actually destroyed both of them. Then they fixed it, so it was like, Okay, the newer one stays into play, the older one gets discarded. I think now they've changed it even further to be like, I can have my legendary creatures, my opponent can have their legendary creatures, but I cannot have two of them. And if I play one, mine just get, I have to pick one to get destroyed, and I can play the new one. I could be wrong on that. Again, magic changes rules, I don't keep up on all of them. Um, this is another neat one. So this is a ruin card, and or this is a new type. Uh, auras are cards that attach to another card. So it says enchant permanent. So permanent is any card that is on your field, like so something that's not in your hand, your deck, discard pile, it's in play. Um, so you can enchant it. it. Says so when ruin the speed enters the battlefield, draw a card. So you play this, you get to draw a card. Um, as long as the enchanted permanent is a creature. It gets plus one attack and has haste. Um, so basically if I'm slapping this ruin because the uh, North sees a lot of ruins in their stuff. That's how they like, essentially how they kind of perform EO magic, I guess, would be like the terminology for it. So if you like, slap this into a creature, they're going to gain some speed and a little, little tiny speed or a speed bonus and... Um, a 1-1. One, one. But the other thing happens, they die, that goes away. Um, but it says, as long as the enchanted permanent is an equipment card, the equipped creature gains plus 1, plus 8. So instead of slapping this ruin into a creature, which boosts only that creature, you could put it onto an equipment card. Um, and then that way, it's the way the equipment cards work, is if the creature is destroyed, the equipment drops to the ground, and someone else can pick it up and use it. Uh, let me see if I can find... Finding equipment. So here we have, like, Raven Wings. So this is an equipment card. So I pay two to put this onto the table. Um, and then I can pay two more to equip it. And I can attach it to a creature. So basically, I play this. It's like, hey, I brought this to the battlefield. And I can pay two to have someone put this on. And now that creature gets plus one and has flying and is also considered a bird. So if I gave that to... Where was my cool black character? If I can find him quick. Well, I don't remember where he went. But I had that, yeah, I got one black guy that said you needed to have, uh, give him plus one, plus one, give him plus one attack. You know, that's something you could definitely do for, like, that guy. Um, you know, and then he'd be able to fly, and he basically give me a win. And then if he dies, this just drops back to the ground, and I can put it on somebody else. So what I could do is I could give one of them creatures just that ability. But if I have the equipment out, I can spend it on here. And someone might be like, well, why wouldn't you always put it on an equipment? Well, the difference is, um, if I attach this to a creature, it costs me two. If I put this onto an equipment, it costs me two to put it on the equipment, and then another two to put it on another creature. So it's kind of, again, like that foretell thing, um, where I can gain instant gratification by doing this, or I can, you know, do something else and do that. And, and the... Fork House sort of the other direction is you can spend a lot right away to gain it right away, or you can spend a little here and a little there. So overall, it might cost a little bit more of the same, but you just spread out the money. 
This one, you can either spend a little right away, getting immediate effect, or you could spend more, equip it to this, it's going to cost you more, but it's a reusable effect. Because unless someone destroys this, they kill a creature, oh, here, now the next time you play another two, and you could actually uh, enchant this while it's on a creature, so then it's essentially the same thing, and then if it drops off, then you get it. Uh, so that's really neat. I like their ruins. Um, I think there's one for each color. I don't, don't think I have all five of them, though. Uh, so we have Open the Omen Paths. This is a neat... I like that you start doing these. You have Choose Effects. You get to choose what you want to do. Uh, Jarl of the Forsaken. Uh, which has Flash, which means you can play it at any time. And it's for, uh, for Tell. Uh, Sulphur's Packmate. Uh, so Sarful is, uh, probably a legendary creature, would be my guess. Uh, so he gets this, um, gets one of the wolves. Invoke the Define. Uh, another Grim Dragger. We have a Yeti. Frost Peak Yeti Snow Creature. Uh, when you pay one and one, uh, snow, he cannot be blocked this turn. So it's kind of like saying, you pay the snowman, you're activating his effect and he's in the snow. And all of a sudden, hey, he can like, gain on you quicker because he's used to being in the snow or, um, you know, or he dodges around you. Uh, King Harold's Revenge. Uh, it's one of the characters, lots of characters named in here. Uh, Brian Barrow Intruder. Uh, Warhorn Blast. Gains you some bonuses. Oh, I, sorry, I read the flavor text down there. Made me laugh. Uh, me down, swords up. Very, like, Norsey thing. Uh, a Breakneck Berserker. Another dwarf. Just has haste. Go for the knees. The last giant who tried to get past us rolled back down the mountain in a dozen pieces. Uh, then here's our dwarf token. So you have, like, one of them cards that creates dwarves. Um, so if you have this token, you can put this into play, so you can remember what, what your card is. If you don't, you just, you know, like, a die or a token or something. Uh, we have a Weathered Ruin Stone. Uh, non-land permanent cards in the graveyard and libraries cannot enter the battlefield. Uh, players cannot cast spells from graveyard or libraries. So it kind of shuts down a bunch of stuff. See, cards like this are really neat, but it's like... It's very specific on when it's going to get used. So we're going to start running into a bunch of duplicates. Uh, a Draugr Reuniter. Zombie Cleric. You cannot stand against us, but when you fall, you will stand with us. I want just some of that flavor text. We have an Ice Hide Troll. So we have a troll that's green. He's snowy. Another Hulk. Uh, I some of these I love these. Undersea Invader. So this is a giant rogue. He is walking under the water. This is how he's attacking. You can see like the ocean. You can see the fish. There's a sunken ship. Um, Flash. You can play him at any time. Undersea Invader enters the battlefield tapped. So that means he comes in tapped. He's hot, kind of, he can't attack right away. But he's hiding kind of underwater. Then he's going to pop up and he's going to wreck some stuff. Uh, Story Seeker, we have a Dwarf Cleric. Uh, we have a Foretell card, so this just, like, is a reminder of what Foretell does. Uh, I have a Foil version, so every once in a while I get some Foil cards. Um, I'm just gonna skip this because I know I have a non-Foil version, it'll be easier to look at. We have another piece of equipment. This one is an artifact, but you see the red border on here? Because you pay for it for red mana. So although it's an artifact card, it is a red mana art red artifact. Um, so it gets affected by red stuff. So equip creature has plus one plus one. Never equipped creature becomes blocked. It deals one damage to defending player. So like this would be a fun one to equip that ruin on to, because then it would be a plus two plus one. Um and he has haste. So you could play it, also and boost up really quickly. You know, like on a brand new creature, you'd be like, I can throw it on a creature the first turn, pay that one cost to equip it to the creature, it's going to have haste plus three attack, or two attack, and if it does damage, 
um, it, if it is blocked, it's going to do more damage. Uh, so I have a Doomsake, Doomscar Oracle. So whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you gain two life. So this is like a card that would really benefit from having that foretell because you could uh, fore have foretell, have a couple cards maybe sitting off to the side foretold, um, you know, past tense. Um, and then, so this guy's out on the field, you play a card on your turn, then you can foretell a second one quicker um, and gain that extra, extra two life. And if you have one of these out, and you have this guy foretell, you can play him, and also now you have two of them out. Uh, we have a Pilfering Hawk. I love birds. I have a bird deck. Um, this guy might go in there. That Snow Maga might, might change my mind. I might throw him in there anyhow, just because he's a two-cost bird. Uh, but yeah, Snow Maga, draw a card and discard a card. Uh, well, at least he left us with a mouse in exchange. Er, uh, make that half a mouse. Now another Dread Rider, Hero's Revenge, and a Grim Draugr. Alright, uh, I'm going to stop that for video one. Um, I will do a part two, and I will go through more of the deck. But since I uh, won't need to spend so much time yammering about what the set is, that video should hopefully get to the rest of the card. So see you guys in part two. Uh, if you really like these Magic the Gathering unboxings, let me know. Um, I, you know, it... it if you enjoy going, seeing these cards, um, hearing me talk about magic, uh, I would love to go buy more and do it. Um, if you don't like them and nobody really watches these videos, um, I'm not going to be as apt to spend time making them. Uh, so it's kind of up to you guys. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.